searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise Treasures that fade Are never enough But you came along And put me back together And every desire Satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Lord, you've seen them all And you still call me friend Cause the God of the mountain Is the God of the valley There's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Let's sing that again, church. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Better than you, Lord, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. You turn morning to dancing, you give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory You're the only one who can Let's sing that again You turn mourning to dancing You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only you turn praise into gardens You turn bones into armies You turn seas into highways You're the only one who can You're the only one You're the only one who can There's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing. You're the only one who can. You're the 
Though the battle rages, we will stand in the fight. And though the armies rise up against us on all sides, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. For in the hour of our darkness, We won't be afraid Hope is rising like the light of dawn Our God is for us, He has overcome For we trust in our God And through His unfailing against him will fall for our God is stronger he can do all things no higher name we can call but Jesus is greater we can do all things all those against him will fall for our God is stronger, He can do all things. No higher name we can call, but Jesus is greater, He can do all Nothing. 
Hey, Real Life, I want to welcome everybody who's watching online to this brand new series we're calling Finding Hope. A uh, special welcome to Karen in Corpus Christi, who's never been to our physical campus, but has been watching us online. Karen, welcome to the family. Uh, we're launching this series uh, because as I've talked to people over the last several months, this is the answer I get to this question. When I say, hey, how are you doing? Number one answer is, Pastor, I'm tired. Now, maybe you can relate to that, but most people that I'm talking to that say I'm tired, it's not because they're busy. I mean, if you think about it, we've been quarantined, and so many of us have just slowed down. I mean, you're not taking your kids to any tournaments. Travel's definitely decreased, and let's just think about it. I mean, for a lot of guys, you hadn't put a hair gel in your hair for six months. Uh, a lot of ladies, you hadn't put makeup on for six months. You know, I mean, what are we tired of? Tired of watching Netflix? I mean, we just say, oh man, I'm just so uh, tired. I mean, school isn't even meeting, you know? Uh, so when you think about this idea of being tired, it's more than uh, physical fatigue. Uh, most of us, you know, like, man, I haven't even been to the gym in six months. So what is it? It's not just being physically tired. I believe that a lot of us can relate to this. We're just out of gas. What is it? Man, we're just running low on hope. You see, the body needs more than just food and, and, and water. We're, we run on hope. We all need it. And we're in short supply of it. And so as I've been praying for us, I really believe that we as a church and, and really as a country, but definitely as individuals at Real Life, we need uh, just a renewal and a refuel of hope. And that's why we're going to spend a few weeks just talking about that word. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at five of the most hopeless stories in the New Testament and discover how those people found hope same way we do as well. So the first story is in the book of Matthew. So I want to encourage you to take a Bible, turn to the book of Matthew. Uh, also, I want to encourage you to download your message notes. Yes, that's right. Message notes are back. So go ahead and download your message notes. And, and we're just going to dive in and really learn about how we can renew our hope and, and really just find hope again. Because listen to me, real life, I believe we have been so focused on our physical health that we have neglected our emotional and spiritual health. We, we've really uh, been impacted by this quarantine, by this pandemic. Our hope has definitely been impacted. And so uh, as I've been praying for us, I'm excited about uh, this series, and, and I want you to miss a single installment of it. And I want to just lay the foundation uh, today. I want to show you this in your notes. We'll get to Matthew in a second, but let's start with the book of Job in your notes. Now, uh, Job is a very depressing book. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's a very hopeless book, except for the last chapter. And I want you to see what Job says and in the middle of this hopelessness that he feels uh, that many of us can relate to. He's definitely emotionally and spiritually tired. Uh, look at what he says in Job chapter 17. He says, where then is my hope? Who can see any hope for me? You ever feel that way? You know, the only time you ask, where is my hope, is when you've lost it. And I believe a lot of us have lost our hope. And if we haven't lost it, we're definitely running low on hope. And this series is really going to help. Uh, it really is. And we're going to have a lot of practical things to, to look at as I just want to renew our hope and and refuel our hope. And so I'm going to ask you to do this for me. Take out uh, your uh, smartphone, and if you're not watching this on your smartphone, go ahead and do this right now. I want you to, to text RLVerse to 97000. That's RLVerse to 97000. You say, what is that going to do? Well, that's actually going to allow me to send you a verse about hope every day for the next five weeks. That's right, if you'll just text RL verse to 97000, I want to give you a dose of hope every day. Because listen, is it any surprise that we feel hopeless? I mean, think about this. When you turn on the news, what do you see? Nothing but hopelessness. Statues are coming down. Uh, cities are blowing up. Death tolls are going up. Hurricanes are ripping things up. And we wonder, why do I feel so hopeless? We need to turn off and get less of the news and get more of hope. 
And I want to send you a verse every morning. So if you text RL verse to 97000, uh, I'm going to send you a verse starting tomorrow all the way to September the 13th. You say, what's September the 13th? That is the first day of face-to-face gatherings for the Austin campus. I'm gonna be right here as I'm here in the building in Austin as it's almost completed. I'm gonna be standing here giving us our vision message for the year, Real Life. I cannot wait uh, to share that message with you from this building with you having the option to be face-to-face. Now in Corpus, You'll have face-to-face gatherings before September 13th, and I'll actually be down at Waves Resort uh, for those gatherings as well. But I cannot wait for that. And as we uh, let the Austin building get ready, listen, we're almost close. We're very close to a permanent building, but I'm going to send you a verse to build in some permanent hope for your life. And we all need that reminder and I'm going to I'm going to send those verses to you but but no wonder we're so hopeless because of the condition of our world all the things that are happening that can discourage us and distract us as we're going to see in the story uh, that happens even today in, in Matthew but before we get there let's look at one more verse in Job one of Job's friends gives a speech about everything that's wrong in the world and and as he's given this speech there's one little phrase that he says And I want you to see it in your notes or right here on the screen. Look at what he says. Those who forget God have no hope. Now we're going to see in the story today that Peter forgets God and he has a moment of of amnesia spiritually and and he starts to sink. He he, he starts to feel hopeless. Uh, But look at that phrase again. Those who forget God have no hope. We see proof of this statement in literally every aspect of society right now, I believe. You know, the further away you get from God, the further away you get from hope. Now, the converse is true. The closer you get to God, the the more hope that you have. As a matter of fact, the happiest, uh, hopeful people are people that feel close to God. And the converse is true. The people who feel far away from God, really the people that feel the most hopeless, And we're going to see this happen in Peter's life. And you notice a lot of people put their hope in a lot of things. Uh, For instance, uh, right now, a lot of people are putting their hope in politics. Now, I I know this may surprise you, but there's a big date coming up in November. We're about 85 days away from it. I know you haven't heard anything about this, but there's something called an election. And people are really really excited about their horse. I mean, who's going to win that race? And they're putting all of their faith, all of their hope in the results of the election. And I just want to remind us as Christians, listen, it doesn't matter who is in the White House. Our hope, whether that person's going to be Republican or Democrat, our hope is not in that person that'll be in the White House after the election. Our hope is not in that person, whoever that man is, is not our savior. Now listen, you need to vote, and I want to make sure you do that. That's your right, but it's also your calling, and every vote's a voice, so make sure you vote. But please hear me today. Our hope as Christians is not who we put in the White House. Our hope is who we put on the cross. You see, as Christians, our hope is not who walks in the White House in 2021. Our hope Is who walked out of the grave 2,000 years ago. Our hope is in Jesus. Our only hope is Jesus. He is our hope. But it's interesting, when people don't have God, they put their hope in a lot of things. And and if government is your highest authority, then maybe you're really struggling about what's going to happen. But when your hope is in God, God sets up all authority, the scripture says. God's over government. And so our hope is in him. But those who forget God have no hope. I believe our nation needs this. I believe we as a church family need this. We need a a fresh infusion of hope. Look at what the scripture says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12. In your notes are on the screen it says, in those days you were living apart from Christ. When you're not close to Christ, you don't have hope. Look at this. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel. In other words, God's people. You did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world, watch this, without hope and without God. And just circle that, without God, circle without hope. No God, no hope. God wants you and I to have hope, and it's found in him. Write this down. God wants you to have a certain, confident 
hope. Write those two words down, confident and certain. And we're going to unpack these as we go through the series, but this is not wishful thinking. This is a hope that, that is not moved because it's a hope based not on our conduct, but on God's character. It's a hope, not based on what we hope happens, you know, wishful thinking. It's based on what he says is true. And, and a confident hope, a certain hope is what the Bible is talking about. This is Christian hope. Look at this verse in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. It says, we have this certain hope. Circle that, certain hope. You know, when you place your faith in Jesus Christ, when he becomes your personal Lord and Savior, when you receive Jesus into your life, you receive hope. And it's an amazing hope. You have a certainty. You have a confidence that when you take your last breath on this earth, you're going to be in heaven. It's because of Jesus. It's an amazing hope. And when you know that Jesus is going to get you to heaven when you die, then you have a hope that Jesus is going to take care of everything. It is a certain hope. Look at this. It's a confidence. It's something you can count on like a strong, unbreakable anchor holding our souls to God himself. Man, now that's real hope. That's certain hope. That's confident hope because it's based not in what you do, but in what Jesus has done. Now, research tells us that people get hopeless, and, it, and there's a lot of research that's been done about this. What causes us to feel so helpless and hopeless? And I want to share with you in your notes, you can write this down, there's five common reasons for hopelessness in this world. And maybe you can relate to these, or at least one of these. Look at what they are. It says, first of all, uh, you can uh, feel hopeless when you feel alone or abandoned. Write that down. You feel alone or abandoned. Listen, if you feel alone long enough, you will feel helpless and you will feel hopeless. And you can be in a crowd and even feel alone. There's some people watching me right now. You're watching me by yourself. You feel alone and it can cause hopelessness. As some of you have a lot of friends on Facebook and may even be watching this with people in the room, but you can be in a crowded room and still feel lonely. And when you feel lonely, loneliness causes hopelessness. Here's another one. Life seems out of control. When life seems out of control, you get hopeless. You feel hopeless. Uh, Here's a phrase that people say when life feels out of control. It's like, I just feel stuck. And when you feel stuck, like you are out of control, like it'll never change. You'll always be in that situation. Your marriage will always be that way. That relationship will never change. Your financial situation will never change. You're stuck right where you are. You'll always feel sad. You're stuck in that relationship, in that financial situation, in your life. It'll never change. And when you don't think it'll change, you're going to feel hopeless. Here's a third one. Uh, You don't see a purpose. You're going to feel hopeless when you don't see a purpose. As human beings, we can really survive and get through a lot of pain if we see the purpose in it. However, if we don't see a purpose, if we don't really realize why is, is this hurt going on, and you don't see a rhyme or reason to it or a purpose through it, you're going to start to feel very hopeless when there's no rhyme or reason. Here's a fourth one. When you don't have what you need. We start to feel hopeless when, man, I just really need this right now, and I don't see a way to get it. I don't see how I'm going to find it. And we feel hopeless. When that happens, I just need this. Maybe I need a little bit more talent to get this job. Maybe a little bit more time to finish this. I need a little bit more money. Uh, I need something in a relationship and my needs aren't getting met. But when that's happening and you're not getting what you need, you feel hopeless. And here's a fifth reason, when you're grieving a loss. But when you lose something, it causes you to feel Hopeless, and maybe you've gone through loss recently or a a series of losses. It can really bring on a hopeless feeling. When you go through a divorce, you feel hopeless. Uh, When you go through the death of a loved one, you feel hopeless. It can cause that feeling. Now, look at all, all five of these again. Can you relate to any of these five? Can you relate to more than one? Uh, I don't know about you, but I can relate to all five of these in this last year of my life. And and today, I just want us to look at uh, this first one, when you feel alone or abandoned. And what we're going to do in this series, we're going to look at all five and see how we can find an answer to all of these reasons for hopelessness, uh, because it's very real when you're in the situation. But you got to get back to hopeful. 
And you say, well, if I feel hopeless today, how do I get back to feeling hopeful? Well, that's what we're going to see in Matthew today. And so uh, as you find Matthew, I was talking to uh, a guy this week, a very successful businessman, uh, very accomplished in his career and his field, and a very hard worker, but he never read the Bible. And so if that's you today, let me just frame up what you're turned to. Matthew is what's called one of the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the first four books of the New Testament. And the word gospel just means good news. And you say, well, what is it good news about? Well, it's covering the history of Jesus. Jesus coming to this earth is very, very good news. You see, back then, 2,000 years ago, it was, it was very, very uh, uh, uncertain. Uh, there was a lot of political uncertainty. There was a lot of confusion. Uh, there was a lot of... Um, uh, just uh, upheaval in, in the way things were going. There was persecution. There was poverty for a lot of people. And just like today, things don't change very much. But in that time, it was very, very dark. And a lot of people had given up on God, forgotten God. And so there was a, a great depletion of hope. Uh, there was not a lot of it. And at this moment, God puts skin on and walks among us. And Jesus enters the scene of history. And all of a sudden, the creator joins the creation in the story, and he came to save us. And as Jesus is walking uh, this earth and, and God put skin on, uh, here's the beautiful thing. Jesus walked into the darkness and he brought light. He walked into the confusion and he brought clarity. Uh, Jesus walked into uh, this, this whole culture of fear and he brought faith. And he, Jesus walked into this hopelessness and he brings hope. And here's what we're going to see. We're going to see this today. We're going to see it over the next five weeks that any hopeless situation, when you add Jesus to it, becomes hopeful in that moment. And so here's what's happening in this story. And so in Matthew 14, Jesus has been teaching all day and he sends the disciples across the Sea of Galilee. And it's really like a big lake, but I'll show you this in the series to come and, and, but on, an, on another message. But, but there's a, a lot of hills around the Sea of Galilee and storms can come up quickly, which one does. And so in the middle of the night, as the disciples are going across the lake, a storm hits and they can't go backwards, they can't go forwards, they're stuck. And, they're, and the, Matthew 14 literally says they were in trouble, understatement. Uh, it, was, it was really a desperate situation. And it says that Jesus came walking on the water. Powerful story. And I just want you to know today, listen, if you feel hopeless, if you feel alone, I've got great news for you. God just doesn't see your need. He comes to your need. Jesus didn't just see the disciples struggling in the storm. He came toward them. He came to them. And I'm telling you, the wind is blowing. The rain is falling. The wind is bringing that rain. It's just pelting these guys. And right in the middle of this, look at what happens. We'll pick up the story in Matthew 14. Look at verse 28. It says, then Peter called to Jesus. So Jesus is walking on the water toward them. He says, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on water toward Jesus. Man, don't you love Peter's fate? I mean, this guy's like, he's over the side of the boat. He's going toward Jesus. But I want you to write something down. You can lose hope when you're alone on the water. You see, some of us in this pandemic, when, when we started this pandemic, do you remember that? Way back in March, remember that far ago? That long ago, right? Uh, when we started this pandemic, you were, you were on fire for God. Maybe you had a lot of hope walking into this pandemic, but you've been trying to do it alone for about six months. And you've been trying to fix everything by yourself. And you've been trying to walk on water by yourself. And let me just tell you, when you are doing that, when you're alone on the water, you are, you are really prone to feeling hopeless. When you uh, lose hope, it's a lot of times you're, you're alone. When you're alone, you're vulnerable. Uh, when no one's walking with you, you're in trouble and you don't even know it. And, and that's what's happening to Peter. I say this to uh, our men's groups all the time. When the enemy wants to influence you, he isolates you. Let me say that one more time. Matter of fact, the enemy can't influence you until he isolates you. Here's Peter, he's all alone. And when you're alone on the water, you can lose hope. Look at what it says all the way back in Genesis. I'll put this verse on the screen. Check this out. It says, then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I'm telling you, that is so true. It is not good for us to be alone. 
You need other people, and you, you need uh, Christ in your life. You cannot do this on your own. And I can tell you this, the times I have felt the most hopeless in my life is when I didn't feel like I had a true friend. I didn't know who was going to really be there for me. I had a lot of acquaintances, and I had a lot of fans, but I just didn't have a friend. I didn't know who is really here for me, who really is going to uh, be there no matter what in my life. And when you get alone and when you feel abandoned, you feel hopeless. And that's what happens uh, to Peter. Look at this next verse. Go down to verse 30. It says, But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. <laughs> what happened to Peter? He got distracted. He got discouraged. And listen, when you start looking at other things besides Jesus, when you start looking at your problems, you start looking at the circumstance, you start watching the news more than you get doses of hope from his word, you're going to start to sink. Write this down. You can lose hope when you stare at your problem. You can lose hope when you stare at your problem. Peter was focused on Jesus. When he got out of that boat, he's focused on Jesus. And listen, when you're focused on Jesus, you're fine. It doesn't matter what the circumstance is. Hope floats. Are you with me? Uh, hope will help you rise above any circumstance. It, you're not ignoring it. Listen, there's still waves, there's still wind, there's still rain. But you are walking through that circumstance because you're focused on Jesus. When you stop focusing on Jesus, you are going to sink. When you start staring at the circumstance, wow, those waves are really high. Wow, that wind is really strong. Wow, that rain is going to fill up this boat. As a matter of fact, if that rain keeps filling up this boat, you see what happens? All of a sudden, you're going to start to sink. You're going to get scared like Peter. You're going to get discouraged. And he starts to sink into hopelessness. And we've all been there. We can all get to that place where we're sinking, where we're stuck, where we're scared, where we feel helpless, and where we get hopeless. So how do you move? How do you get back to hopeful when you get to that place where you're sinking? The same way that Peter did. Look at this verse, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. I love this. It says, let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from beginning to end. I want you to circle let us and circle Jesus. And there, this verse contains the two secrets for how you're going to get through any hopeless situation. It's the two secrets that will help you get through this pandemic, but also help you get through any problem in life. And, and it's, 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 there's a lot of good self-help books out there, but, but they ignore these two things I want us to, to end with today. And I want you to write them down because they're simple, but they're very powerful. Are you ready for this? How are you going to get from hopeless to hopeful again? First thing, you cannot change without the power of God. You see, I, I don't know how to change. I, I, I just feel so down. I feel so discouraged. I'm so lonely. You will not change without the power of God working in your life, period. You see, um, AA, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, if, if you ever go to one of those meetings, they have what's called a 12-step program. And that 12-step program will walk you through uh, a pathway, a journey to freedom. But that first step, spoiler alert, the first step is to acknowledge your need for a higher power. They used to say God, now it just says higher power. But I'm telling you, every person, every man, woman, listen to me right now, you know deep down, even if you're uh, struggling and you think, maybe, maybe I'm an atheist, maybe God's, the deep down you know there's something bigger than you. There's someone stronger than you. And, and, and you need to have a hope in someone bigger, stronger, more powerful than you are because you cannot change on your own. Neither can I. We need God's help. And that's not just the first step for alcoholics, by the way. That's the first step for all of us. It's the first step to get out of a destructive habit. It's the first step to get out of stinking thinking. It's the first step to get out of the rut that you're in. It's the first step to get out of this, I'll never change, nothing will ever good happen to me. I'll always be lonely. I'll always be abandoned. It's the first step. Jesus, I need you deep down. We know this. And listen, when you feel hopeless, don't give up. Reach up. And that's what Peter does. Look at this. Uh, three words that he says right here, the next verse. I love this. Save me, Lord. Circle that in your Bibles or in your notes here. Save me, Lord. One of the shortest prayers in the Bible. By the way, you don't have to say long prayers. Can I get an amen? Somebody that's praying right before the meal. Let's just go short prayers, okay? You don't have to have a long prayer when you need God's help either. Save me, Lord. God, I need you. I cannot fix this. 
I can't change this. I can't manipulate this. I can't get through this. I don't have the strength. I don't have the wisdom. I don't have the power, but you do. Save me, Lord. I'm sinking. I need your help. Now, here's the beautiful thing. When you ask God for help, he helps you. When Peter says, Jesus, help me, all of a sudden, what, what, what does that do? Lord, I need your help. All of a sudden, the focus gets back on Jesus. My, my, my focus gets off the wind, off the waves, off the rain, and it gets back onto him. Jesus, I need you. And here's the good news. When you need Jesus' help, he helps you. When you ask him for help, he's going to help you. Look at this. Jesus immediately, circle that word, immediately, he comes to you. When you say, I need you, he's there. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. I love this. I mean, the, the ultimate lifeguard is Jesus. When you are sinking and you don't know how you're going to get out of it, you don't know where to turn, you feel hopeless, Jesus, I need you, puts you on solid footing. That one prayer, that one moment. And when you're sinking, he just saves you. And he says, look, he says, Peter, you have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? Now, I love this. Watch this. Jesus saves you, then he speaks into your life. I love this. He doesn't give him a sermon while he's sinking. You know, like, hey, Peter, how come you're doubting? Blah, blah, blah. Hey, Jesus, how come you didn't want to reach out to me? Blah, 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 blah. You know, he's like, he doesn't do that. He's going to save you, and then he's going to speak into your life. You just come to him like you are. We don't have to clean up, get perfect. Jesus, I need you. I'm a mess. I'm weak. I need strength. And he comes to you, and then he speaks into your life, and he brings that strength with, with him. He restores your hope. And that's where you find change. You are not going to change without the power of God. Look at this verse in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. This is one of the verses I'm going to text you uh, in the next uh, several days and weeks. It says, I pray that God, watch this, the source of hope. Circle that. That's who God is. God's the source of hope. And that's why you feel hopeless. When you go anywhere else besides God, it, it depletes you. It, it, it doesn't fulfill you. It's not satisfying. But God's the source of hope. Watch this. He'll fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. The most joyful people during this pandemic, the most peaceful people during this pandemic are people who are connected to God and relying on his power to get them through it. Look at this. Then you will overflow with confident hope. There's that word confident. Again, confident hope, certain hope. Confident hope through the power of of the Holy Spirit. God's going to give you hope and it's going to overflow. You're just going to, you're going to give other people hope because you're plugged into the source of hope. Now, when you see this, these words, you, you completely with joy, you trust in him, you will overflow. That you is plural. It's, 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 it's more than one person. And I want you to write this down. There's two things we're writing down today that are very important to change. Number one, I can't change without the power of God. Jesus saved me. I am sinking into hopelessness without you. I am weak without you. I, I can't get through this or fix this or make it through this valley without you. And then, write this down, you cannot change without community. You need other people in your life. That's what you need to really change. Change requires community. God wired this whole universe in such a way that we need each other. You need other people, and so do I. All the way through the scriptures, you see this phrase, one another. It's 58 times in the New Testament. It says to love one another, care for one another, encourage one another, support one another, pray for one another, share with one another, greet one another. Over and over again, we need each other. And so let me give you a very practical step with this. Matter of fact, two of them. Uh, the first one is I want to encourage you to text something to the same number that we did the verses, I want you to text this, RL Next Step. So RL Next Step to 97000. Just text RL Next Step to 97000. You say, what does that do? That connects you to this family. Uh, I want to encourage you, we're going to have two Next Step opportunities. I'm going to be doing them live on uh, Zoom. I'm also going to be doing them live in Corpus for those that want to gather with me face to face. But at the end of this month, we're going to have next step, and, and it's where you can discover your purpose. I'm going to help you with that, but also uh, you can connect to this family, this spiritual family. You need a family. Uh, you really do. And I want to encourage you to just text RL next step 
to 97000, and we're going to hang out for a, about an hour and a half, two hours at the most, and it's just a one-time deal. And I want to promise you, I want to pour into you, I want to encourage you, I want to help you grow, but I also want to help you connect to this family officially. To say, you know what, I want to officially connect to this family. Some of you are fans, and you've been in the stands for a while, and I just want to help you get into the game, Okay. You guys know, uh, you know, football, we're still debating if the NFL is getting started or not, or college football, those kind of things. But you know what football is, right? Uh, football is 22 guys in desperate need of rest being watched by thousands of people in desperate need of exercise, okay? That's football. Uh, I'm going to encourage you, and if you're, if you're not careful, that's a lot of churches too, but at real life, we want to get you in the game. I want you to, I wanna, I want you to be on the field. And that's why Jesus called the disciples. He said, hey, I, I want you to come to me, follow me. And I want to help you uh, lean into following Jesus, but also discover your purpose and to really grow right here at Real Life. Type RL Next Step, text that to 97000 because you need people around you and they need you. We need each other and you need to be a part of a spiritual family. Watch this. Uh, Matthew 14 in our text today, Look, go down to verse 32. It says, when they climb back into the boat. So here comes Jesus and Peter. He's connected to the power of God in Christ. He's back in the boat. Look at this. The wind stopped. I don't know what storm you're facing. I don't know what's happening. I do understand COVID-19 and the, the pandemic around the world. Did you know that God can stop that in a moment? But it can also stop, a, there's a lot of other storms that we're praying for in our church family right now. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through, he can calm that storm around you just like that. But the first thing he always does is calms the storm inside of you. And all of a sudden, here comes Peter, much more settled, much more at peace. Why? Because he's connected to power. He's connected to Christ. And then he gets in the boat and look what happens. It says, then the disciples worshipped him. And just circle that. The disciples worshipped him. You really are the son of God. You know, you need a group of people that are going to focus on Jesus, that aren't perfect. These disciples are not perfect. I mean, uh, they were worried. Uh, they were scared. Uh, they uh, didn't know what to do at times. But you need a group of people that are focused on following Jesus and, and want to, as best they can, grow in that relationship. And we call those groups here at Real Life, life groups. And so uh, one last application I want to give you is ask you to text, ready, RL groups to 97000. You're like, Micah, we're texting a lot today. You're welcome. Listen, I want to give you as practical, relevant application this as possible. And I'm telling you, your life is going to change when you get into a group. And this will help you connect to one. We're going to start these groups September the 13th. Does that date sound familiar? That's when I'm going to be in this building for those who are ready to gather face to face. But also uh, those in Corpus, I'm bringing that message directly to you that same day. And those online. We're still going to have the online option. As a matter of fact, many of our life groups are going to be on Zoom this fall. And so if you say, I just want to be connected that way. What an awesome way to connect. And it takes away all the excuses. All you've got to do is open your laptop and click, and you're on and in a group. And I want to encourage you to take the 90-day challenge with me. And for 90 days from September 13th to December 13th, shorter than the pandemic, okay, I want you to try a group just going one hour a week to a life group. We've got them for all ages, different uh, times of the week. And again, some on Zoom, some in person. Find your group, and this will help you and help us help you get connected to a group, okay? Because you need a boat. You need some people in your boat who are all focused on Jesus. It says these disciples gathered and they focused uh, on Christ. And I want to encourage you to get in a life group. You are not going to change on your own. And if you, if you were, you would have already. You need a group of people. And you're going you're gonna to lean in more and grow more. And I see it in my own life. Uh, right now, I'm in three life groups a week, and I I'm never going to ask you to do anything I'm not doing. Now, I'm going to pare that down to one uh, starting September 13th, but, but I am all in, and I'm telling you, it is so encouraging to, to connect to community, and I watch my life change. My whole day changes when I'm in these groups, and I want to encourage you to do the same thing. It happens in this story, right? And can't you just hear the guys uh, after this event? Hey, Peter, remember that time you got out of the boat? Man, you were all in. And they, they, you need people to celebrate your mountaintops. 
Because if you're always waiting for something good to happen to you, you're going to be waiting a while. But if you want to celebrate with others, get in a life group and you'll always have something to celebrate. Good is happening around you. But also you need people that care for you in the bad times. Hey, Peter, do you remember that time when you sank? Man, you're about to drown. And Jesus came and helped you. Remember that? You need people who are there for you in the valleys. Who, who are there for you in those stories that where they can say, hey, God was still faithful even when you were sinking. And people that are just going to focus on Jesus and help you refocus your hope on the source of hope, who's God. And so I'm going to encourage you to connect to community uh, through life groups. Do it right now. Just fill out the form, RL Groups 97000, and I promise you, you are going to find yourself moving from hopeless to hopeful because you're connecting to God's power and you're connecting to others. Look at what the Bible says about us and our need for each other. Romans 12, 4 and 5, it says, Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. And this is talking about us as a church. The church is an organism, not an organization. Look, it says, We are many parts of one body. And watch this. We all belong to each other. I cannot do what I do by myself. And you cannot do what God has designed you to do by yourself. We need each other. I'm literally standing in a building that was only possible because a lot of people prayed, a lot of people gave, a lot of people just were all in, and a lot of people set up and tore down and moved to nine different locations over nine years to get to this point. I am here right now today because of the people around me and the power of God in me. And in the same way, God wants to work in your life to bring a vision about and, and make your dreams truly fulfilled in a satisfied life. And the way that happens is when you connect to his power and to community. You see, I know we pulled out our phones a lot today. And, and you know, when you look at your phone, we always look to the right top hand corner, right, to the little battery. You know, what happens when that thing's red, when it gets red, you know, man, you get a little panicked. You swipe down, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm on 3%. What, what, what needs to happen? I need to plug in. I, I, I've got to plug in this phone uh, so I can, you know, c continue the connection. And in the same way, what we're talking about in this series and what we figured out today is, listen to me, we are depleted when it comes to hope. And we have been so focused on our physical health that we have neglected our spiritual and emotional health, and we're running low on hope. And we need to connect again. I'm going to ask you to connect to God. Lean back into him and his word and his perspective. And also, we've got to lean in. We've got to connect to community. And through life groups, uh, through these verses, uh, through Next Step, that's going to happen. And so I just want to pray for us that we would connect to God and to community and before I do that, though, I just want to encourage you again on these practical things to help us lean in to hope. Uh, the first thing I want to remind you is that you can give. It's a way to be a part of a spiritual family. And I want to encourage you to help us keep the message of hope out there for others. And when you give to real life, you give us the ability to share hope, spread hope, and encourage each other, pointing them to the source of hope who's God. And so thank you for giving. Some of you can't give right now. Let us know how we can help you. But you can give through the app, give online, the QR code, you can scan it. And I just want to thank you guys for being so generous. And if you've been given a paycheck, then you've been given an opportunity to give some of that back to your spiritual family to say, hey, I'm all in. And I'm not just a fan. I'm a part of the family. And I want to contribute to the vision of real life. Thank you for giving. But also, please remember all the things I'm giving you today. So I'll put them all up on the screen at the same time. I'm giving you a chance to get verses every day. I want to give you a verse every day. So thank you for giving financially to real life if you're able, but I want to give you a verse. And I want to just send you a daily dose of hope, okay? So just text RL verse to that, and we'll, 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 get you, we'll get you those verses. Also, next step, text RL next step. Hang out with me for just a couple of hours, okay? It's actually from 1230 to 2, so it literally is an hour and a half. And I promise you, I'm going to encourage you, help you find your purpose, and literally give you uh, the way to grow and connect to this church family. And then find a group, okay? Commit to one now, 
and we're going to help you plug into one uh, in the coming months. So in September 13th, this is an incredible way for you to start infusing and connecting to hope. All three of these ways are found by texting these things to 97000, okay? So let your pastor pray for you as we finish today. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for your grace. And Jesus, thank you for hope. All of us have sunk down. All of us feel depleted. And all of us have been where Peter was in this story. And some are there right now. And I just pray, Jesus, you'd help every person listening to me lean back into hope and, and just invite you afresh and new into their life as their Lord and Savior and look to you and just whisper this prayer, Lord, save me. Lord, help me. It's a humble prayer, but it's a powerful prayer. And today, God, would you help every person who's listening today and bless every heart, every home right now. And also, God, help us to plug into community. God, forgive us. God, we haven't been as faithful on, uh, online to connect, uh, being able to do Zoom life groups. But God, help us. Help us to lean back in and realize we were never designed to do this alone. We belong to each other. May we lean in and connect to community like never before. And I thank you for this spiritual family that our hope is anchored in you. For we ask all this in the name of the one who died on a cross and rose again, Jesus Christ. And everyone said, amen. Real life. I'll see you next week for another dose of hope. God bless you guys. <laughs>